Hi, this is Fred with Quality One Engravers. I'm going to do a uh, an EPS import, and I'm going to kind of do it on the fly. So hopefully everything works well. File import in my temp directory. I, here's a St. Louis Rams logo EPS and import. Uh, it gives you this backwards L, and I'm going to usually use the EPS import filter and close shapes. Say OK. Now you can see a little bit up to the top here. Usually what I do when it's selected like this, I just click on P1 so I make it everything labeled like this. So and then I click on this CC. I don't know if it's some kind of registration mark or something that comes in. But anyways, here's my logo that I want to work with. Now one of the things that happens on an EPS file is oftentimes there are pieces on top of pieces so I don't know if it needs this outer border or not but anyways I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is click on it and go to a range and on group so let's see what that does okay so that didn't do too much so I'm gonna go to a range and break path and you can see it thinking just a little bit now sometimes on EPS files there are multiple layers and let's just see if there are what you do is you click on this and sure enough there's something underneath there so I'm gonna click on the T and move it up so I know there's something underneath there so I'm gonna now click shift click and there might there's also the center so I'm gonna, it's just a little faster and I move this up and sure enough there's still something underneath there so now if I click on these one at a time hopefully there is see there's even another layer underneath that so I can click on this one this one and this one and delete it and let's just see if there's even another and there's another layer under that one click and delete that now let's see if there's another and sure enough there's another layer under that so I'm going to click here here usually there are not this many layers on here but I don't want the L to go and I do the center so the center of the hole so I can see it a little bit easier move it up delete delete and is there another layer there is there's one two okay so I only have to do this one more time once twice I already did the L and I'm gonna drag it up here delete delete okay now so since this one's done I'm gonna just click on this arrange and make path now I have to go through all of these and do the same thing to it and I usually try to get certain areas to work with and then I'll look even right here and I can see because it was an EPS file and there were multiple colors on top of it that's the reason for it so I'm going to delete this, delete, delete this, because I only want to leave one of these. So I'm just delete, 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 delete it again, delete, and then that one I want to undo, because that's only going to be one file. So, so far I have done St. Louis and only right here, that one little piece. So let's see how many times I have to. So you can just click and delete, click and delete, click and delete and then control Z to undo so I'm going to click on this 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 one and this one delete and I can't draw a box around it because it's going to select all of them so that would be a problem this one this one this one this delete one two 
three, four items. Delete it. And I think this. Okay, and that got rid of that one. 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 That got... So I need to go undo, 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 undo. Okay, so now these are all one entity. So I'm going to select this one. And control H is, or you can go to make a path or you can go to group if you wanted to. So I make path is better because you're going to be doing fill patterns on stuff. So now we need to walk through the entire logo doing this. And you can also see a couple areas in here that sometimes there are duplicate areas on top of each other. So you have to kind of remember what it looks like so you don't get rid of the shape. So I need to undo that to put it back there. So these, one, two, three, four, five, all are getting deleted. Now, after you're all done uh, and you think you might not have gotten rid of something, you can move things to the front. So let's say I take this and I go arrange and order. Now, unfortunately, the front is the back and the back is the front. So I'm going to move it to the back, which puts it to the front. Uh, I know that's confusing, but I didn't make the program. So I'm also going to go under array, under layout and go down to sequence and sequence by list. So here's this poly arc. And unfortunately, it's not split apart. So I need to I need to do that. I need to take this and go arrange and break path, and then do my. And now I can see there's just the letter L. I'm holding the shift key down, and there's the letters in that in that group. Now you'll see here's this polygon, and here's this polygon, and so forth. So if you were to let's just take a little spot right here. We just take all of these things and control F to send it to the back which sends it to the front control alt L you'll see this piece and this piece are both the same so you can see there's one two three four five six of them that are exactly the same so I've got to delete it five times so you'll be able to see it because after you're all done, it should be a much simpler shape. So I click delete two, three, four, four and control Z. Okay. And then delete, delete, delete. Again, delete. And this one should be the last one. Now, the other thing that you have to be careful down here, there may have been, I should have zoomed in. Let me just see if I. There's often a lot of layers here when they're mixing colors. So you can see how many shapes are here. Typically, there are not that many, but there are often a few. So now, let's say, without going through all of it, I'd have to do this to the whole logo. Let's say this is what I want to engrave. I go to Arrange, Make Path, or Control H, F7 to zoom in on just that, Engrave, Create Tool Path, Fill, and for this, I'm going to pick probably about a 15 cutter. And I usually leave it at zero depth, and I'm going to give it a, a P15, and then say uh, sweep tool down, which is one of my favorites. And typically the overlap is about 35 to 40 percent, so I'll go 40, and say OK. So you can see I probably could have picked for this size logo a bigger um, cutter. So I'm going to click on it and go engrave edit tool path and I'm going to go back up to here and this time I'm going to pick a 25 
change this to 25 so when I go to engrave I know what I want to engrave it as keep it as 40 percent and say okay so now this will give a much better look now if you want to know what it's gonna look like you can go alt N and you'll see you will miss a few of the points in here because you're using a rounded tool so if I go alt N again it turns off and of course had I gone back to engrave edit the tool path and if I changed it back to a 15 cutter I'll show you the difference again I like to keep my color so I can remember it and I say OK and if I go alt N again you can see how much tinier those points are of course with a smaller cutter but of course it'll take at least double the amount of time to engrave and then likewise you can engrave this back section do a fill pattern and then it engrave right over that and if you do want to select just so let's say that this I'm going to fill with a 20 with a 30 cutter engrave create tool path fill and I'm going to select a 30 cutter for this because that's what I have in my tool that will also be a gray which is not the best but anyways this this is what you will be looking at right here so I'm going to turn off alt N so you can see the tool path now let's say that I want to engrave just this I can see that this is P15 and because I want to get an A in the class I'm going to hold down the alt key and click on P15 and now that is the only item that I can select to engrave and that is what I would send to the engraver Hope this helps.